I have never seen a freshman so effective. She passed controversial bills that with tenacity that was just amazing. And she is coming back again this year as her second year um, with even more bills. And she is just gonna give us a quick update on two bills that she's really excited about. And we just thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for being here today. Thank y'all, I'm sorry I was late. I was at a Jefferson County um, superintendent meeting where Danny Garrett and I got to uh, talk about school choice with all the superintendents, plus a couple of Democrats who were clearly against the bill. But we more than held our own. And let me say, y'all, I'm excited about this school choice bill. It is not perfect, but it is really good. And we don't want to lose the good in pursuit of perfection. But one thing I do think we need to keep an eye on is um, to make sure our homeschoolers remain no testing, y'all. If there's one thing we got to keep, that's currently how the bill reads. When I got briefed by the governor's office, that was the one thing I felt like they might have been a little shady, shaky about, and I'm afraid that we could lose that. So as much as we would like to see homeschoolers get more than 2,000 or 4,000 max per family, we will take that if we can keep testing out of it. So y'all keep an eye on that. I'm gonna keep an eye on it and I'll uh, work to keep y'all informed. And I will say the people that are carrying that bill were hand selected by the governor as the people that she felt like were most likely to be able to influence the body as a whole and to make sure this bill gets passed. But I, I know for a fact, uh, Danny Garrett and Arthur Orr are in support of it. I don't know that Ledbetter knows you know, that much about it, but he's on it, he's in it, he's not gonna fight it, so that's a great thing for us. Um, okay, I don't know which two bills I'm supposed to talk about, but I'm gonna pick my two. Uh, you may have told me, but I forgot. <laughs> um, uh, my Women's Bill of Rights is coming back. This passed out of Health Committee last year in the House. And this is the bill that simply defines male and female by the biological definition that we all know, that we've all been brought up with. It says there are only two sexes, and every individual is either male or female. The term sex is objective and fixed. I mean, how easy is that? Um, Riley Gaines is supporting this bill and her group, the Independent Women's Forum, and they have actually hired a lobbyist to help me with this, which makes it so fun. We'll help you too. Yeah, so we love it. And y'all, um, I dropped it. Sad, uh, I dropped it this week. My days are so confused, y'all. Um, I dropped it the first day that I could. Um, we'll be getting, well, I'm already getting pushed back. We'll be immediately getting pushed back. Unfortunately, due to a number of circumstances, the bill is not going to start in the House this year. But I have um, our favorite uh, Senator, April Weaver, carrying this in the Senate. And she's going to be a strong proponent. We'll start it up there. We'll bring it down to the House, and it's going to get through. Whatever, whatever they throw at me, doesn't matter. We're gonna take it and we're gonna get this bill through this year. So I'm really excited about that. Okay, this other thing, and I might mention three bills, but I'm gonna be fast. Okay, I did just drop this bill that I want y'all to understand because it's already hit the, my favorite, um, my favorite journalists have already started attacking this bill and part of it's because API is also supporting it. But this is a bill, it's called my Young Worker Waiver Bill. And this is a bill that I hope will get more young people involved in the workforce. But this allows 14 and 15 year olds to work without having to get permission from the school system, right? Why should they need a permission slip from the school system if their parents and they decide they want to work? So there's still plenty, plenty of protections on these kids, y'all. They can only work three hours a day, 18 hours a week during the school year, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week during the summer. There are 17 hazardous jobs that they cannot do. There are tons of protections on these kids. But we need kids learning the value and dignity of work. We currently have young people, we have 100,000 young people between the ages of 18 and 24 in our state that are not working or going to school. What are these kids doing? I don't know. But we do know the sooner that we introduce them to working and the dignity of work, the more successful they're gonna be in as adult. So I hope this gets kids thinking, you know what, I don't have to be 16 to work. If I've got time, I could be 14 and do it. So I've got that, okay. Um, DEI and public universities. 
we are addressing this. We are addressing this in a number of ways. I do have a bill that I'm massaging that I can drop that eliminates funding of DEI in our public universities. And I completely want that to be the end result. But there's a couple of ways where you're looking at doing this. First, one of them is the CRT bill that Ed Oliver's been working on. And it's going to come through this year. We have heard the speaker talk about it. We've heard everybody speak, talk about it. I mean, this is going to be one of the first things we, we do pass is the CRT bill. It's also called Divisive Concepts. I have asked them to insert a couple of DEI items in there such as not being able to require diversity statements, these loyalty statements that you have to take in order to get a job at a university or to apply for nursing school. Any number of times in our universities days, uh, employees and students are required to take to make these diversity statements. I want those to end. And then also required diversity training that we know is going on all over the place in our universities. So I've asked them to at least insert those two things in the CRT bill. They're looking at a whole lot of DEI issues. So we may get it taken care of partially with that bill. Also, um, Danny Garrett and Arthur Orr are on board with um, defunding through the budget. So we have to be careful. There's a possible way we can do that and you know, attach some language to it. So I'm going to let those things process. And then I may still drop that DEI bill just to like double enforce it. And there's a lot of people that want me to drop it as well. And I might. We'll, just, we'll see kind of how things go along. Um, Y'all know we have a porn ID bill out there that Bill Robinson's carry, carrying, which I think is good. Um, we have the filter device bill that have y'all talked about all that stuff? Okay, I wasn't here earlier, so I apologize for that. And, um, and I'm going to be carrying, and I'm not going to have to talk about this in detail either, but the sex ed bill, but Joy is going to speak that, speak to that in a little while, um, which is the most important part of that bill is what it keeps out. Very important things we're going to keep out. Um, but the important thing for y'all to know is that um, it's going to stress abstinence. The new word for abstinence, I had to learn this, is sexual risk avoidance. And um, the other important thing to know is sex ed is not required by law. It depends on the school systems, and parents can opt out. We're going to make sure that that remains in the language, that parents will have at least a two-week notice that they can opt out with their kids. So is there anything else that you want me to talk about, Maggie? Because I have no idea if I covered what you want to do. That's great. We love you. Thank we you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are moving right along. Okay.